Well, students, we're gonna have fun today making an imaginary fish. Um, I call this a shoe fish because we're gonna use this shape um, and it looks kind of like a shoe. Sometimes I have students trace their own shoe to do this, but just with germs and stuff right now, I'm gonna give you one of these stencils so then it still looks like a shoe and then we'll use our imagination to turn it into a fish. So we'll put it kind of in the middle of your paper so you've got room back here for the tail. Um, so I don't wanna end up running out of space for it. So we'll start here and I'm just gonna hold it with one hand and we'll trace around it carefully. I'm leaving a little bit of room at the back here for the tail. You can see when I take it off that I've got room for the top fins, I've got room for bottom fins, I've got room for the sand and the background too. So here, I'm gonna start off probably with the face of my, um, of my fish. I would think about all sorts of details. So if I'm gonna have a mouth, I might have like lips for my fish. I'm gonna do maybe some teeth. They could be rounded teeth, they could be sharp teeth. Thinking about different fun shapes you could use. So I'm gonna use maybe, um, maybe a triangle type shape for an eye and then maybe put a circle inside. So I've got the face for my fish. I'm gonna think about fins. I would definitely do a top fin. I would do um, a tail. You can use whatever shapes you want. I would use, um, definitely do a bottom fin. And I'm gonna do probably a side fin too. These fins are gonna help but be a fast swimmer. Then, when I have the fins done, I'm gonna think about um, extra details. So, in order for a fish to breathe underwater, I'd probably do some gills. Um, I would probably do some lines on these. Often fins have lines. That's gonna allow me to do some patterning. I'm gonna do some scales. And when I do some scales, I am gonna think about pattern that I can include. So maybe I'm going to do a curvy line and then I'm going to do some big dots and then I'm going to do a curvy line and then I'll do big dots. So if I have pattern, that's going to make it easy to color it. I might do a couple of lines on this too. Once I have, sometimes I even like to do like so because the shark, the shark that we did and the dolphin had like a different color for the belly. So maybe I'm gonna do just like another line here. Once you have the um, fish drawn, I would like you to draw some of the things that we talked about when we did skills of observation. And I would probably start off with some sand. Maybe I'm gonna do um, some rocks. We said that seaweed would be good. So we could have some seaweed. And I'm gonna have that seaweed be really tall and kind of climbing right up behind my fish. Have some more seaweed down here, kind of growing off of these rocks. Then maybe I'm gonna do some coral. And I think it's fun to have some smaller ones in front. Then I'm gonna do maybe another line of sand because I can have like sand and rocks here. If I put another line of sand that goes behind here, then I can have another layer of seaweed or plants growing. If you do wanna do like a fish friend or something like that, I might make a jellyfish. Um, or if you wanted to do like some bubbles or something, that could be fun. And down on the sand, if you did want to include um, a shell, for example. I could do a seashell or maybe like just some sand hills or something. When you're done, then raise your hand and I'll give you a marker to trace it.
We're gonna trace it all out carefully. And I want you to be thinking to yourself, well, I'm gonna trace and then I'm gonna erase. So we'll get it all traced out. I'm going kind of fast because I want you guys to have more work time, but I don't want you to go as fast as I am and make it sloppy or end up having to fix a bunch of your work. So try to keep your lines nice and smooth. Don't forget your fins and your gills. And I'm glad that I've got a few different shapes for the eye. So I've got a triangle and two circles. I'm gonna do my top fin. When you're done doing your fish, please do trace out your background. I'm gonna get all of my sand and rocks and coral and seaweed and shells done. And then we'll probably do a little bit of coloring today. We'll do a bunch more coloring next time. And then we will paint them too. So I don't want you to go too fast on the coloring part. We'll do a lot more of that next time. So here, we'll move on to the coloring part. When you're all done, I should do more erasing than this, but for this example, I'm gonna do it kind of quick. Um, any pencil you see, you should erase. Now, when you're coloring this, I do want you to know that we're gonna paint a good portion of it. So I would like you to kind of think about what we did when we did your pictures with you or your mom or your dad. I kind of reminded you about, well, trace your lines and color your shapes. That's kind of what I would like you to do here so then we're able to do a bunch of painting on it. Um, so here we'll move down to doing, the, um, doing some of this color. So these lips here are a shape, so I'm gonna color them. And I'm trying to pick colors that are not, um, I wouldn't do a lot of blue because the water is gonna be painted blue. Um, we're not gonna color the water blue. So you can use the color wheel. Purple is right next to pink on the color wheel. So I could take this purple and then mix it with a little bit of pink. So that's a shape, so I'm gonna color it. Then I don't want my teeth to get covered up by paint when we do that. So I would like you to color those white. I'll take out my white crayon. Even though you can't see them now, that'll be good for later. So I'll color those in. And then the eye shape is a shape. So I'm gonna color it. I'm gonna leave the outsides white. So I'm gonna color those in. And then this is a shape. So I'll color it. Might do a mix of orange is right next to yellow. Now these are some lines. So if this is a line, I'm gonna trace it. But the dots are a shape, so then I'm gonna color them. And I always like tracing with one color on the color wheel and then filling with the one that's next to it. 
So then many of these areas, I'm gonna turn into a pattern. So I've got red, then I've got yellow, orange, red. And then what is this gonna be? It's gonna be yellow, orange. And then these are lines. So I'm gonna trace them. I don't want all my lines to be exactly the same, so I'll make this one a, a red line, then maybe make this one an orange line. This is a line, so I would trace it. But I don't want to color my whole fish, because I can end up painting that section. So please remember that next time we will do a bunch more, so I'm only gonna be doing just a little bit here. And then next time we'll work on giving it a bunch more color and we'll talk about which areas we're going to paint i would definitely avoid colors like blue since the water is going to be blue i like using oranges reds pinks some of those brighter colors because then they'll show up against the darker colors of paint so any of these lines here i can trace that line i'm going to trace i'll trace these but any of the shapes you can color using the color wheel. So let's have fun working on these. We will work a lot more next time on them so we don't need to go too fast. Let's have fun.